Greetings and welcome to the New Calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and today I'm going to be talking about the most important theorem in mathematics, the mean value theorem. You know this works for one reason only and one reason alone, the mean value theorem. So let's begin. Now, in the Encyclopedia Britannica, it says the mean value theorem in mathematical analysis, well, actually, it's got nothing to do with mathematical analysis, deals with dealing with a type of average. It's not a type of average. It's the arithmetic mean, okay? Not a type of average, but the arithmetic mean. So nobody before me ever understood these things, and I'm repeating it again because some people seem to have forgotten that I was the one to first construct, to first produce a constructive proof of the mean value theorem. Useful for approximations and for establishing other theorems such as the fundamental theorem of calculus. Actually, the fundamental theorem of calculus is derived directly from the mean value theorem in just one step, okay? It's not a different theorem, it's, 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 a direct result of the fundamental of the mean value theorem of calculus. So um, <clears throat> forget about the statement here because it's a lot of gibberish and it's not really remarkable. Uh, in fact, it's unremarkable nonsense. Okay. And so, and this statement here is really a comical statement because it's a total giveaway about the state of mainstream academia. So it says, although the mean value theorem seemed obvious geometrically, proving the result without appeal to diagrams involved a deep examination of the properties of real numbers, in other words, objects that don't exist because there is no such thing as a real number, and continuous functions. Absolute rot, okay, total absolute rot. Other mean value theorems can be obtained from this, and that, that's even more laughable because the other so-called mean value theorems are also unremarkable, and in fact, uh, very similar to the mean value theorem and derived from the mean value theorem or some common logic, which I'll, I shall explain to you shortly. So let's close that. And now I'm going to look quickly at Gilbert Strang, this professor from MIT, because he wrote this garbage calculus book many decades ago. And uh, so he discusses the mean value theorem. Uh, let's see, where does he discuss it? In... Uh, this, on this page here. So he says learning objectives. So this is typically the way most American uh, textbooks begin with, learning objectives. And as you see, he begins with the Rawls theorem, which uh, also is uh, pretty unremarkable because it has just three cases, really. And you can see basically that it's true from each of these cases, case A, B, and C. And I'm not going to sit explaining these cases because it's very easy to see. And it, uh, uh, there's a lot of hand-waving that goes on about this, but, uh, and of course, uh, Strang, being the, the incredible fool that he is, uh, brings up an extra theorem, the extreme value theorem, and, and tries to prove that uh, uh, in a sort of hand-waving fashion again, that Rolle's theorem is true, which it is. And then he doesn't prove the mean value theorem, which is coming up here by itself. He actually uses Rolle's theorem and he says it's just a special case of the mean value theorem. All right. So, and notice that in, in, <coughs> in uh, Strang's garbage textbook, there is no mention of arithmetic mean. Okay. So he basically hand waves all over the show, diddles here, diddles there, etc. And it's all total garbage. So I'm going to close his textbook because it's rubbish and show you the first ever constructive proof. Now I'm going to do this using mainstream calculus, okay? In other words, using the theory of limits so that you can see that the mean value theorem is about an arithmetic mean. Nothing else, actually. Nothing else. So and that's the reason, and, and why, why is this arith, so what the mean value theorem says is that you can actually find the arithmetic mean of all the innumerably many y values in this interval if 
the curve that you're examining or that you're doing it for is continuous. But how can you do something infinitely in a finite number of steps? Well, you're about to see how, uh, and it's due to a special property of smooth curves, right? The, the property of smooth curves, pr curves produces a telescopic function so that, so that you'll see that what you end up with is just a difference of two boundary values to find the arithmetic mean of all the vertical lines in a given interval, right? So using the bogus mainstream formulation of calculus, which says that there is a C such that the right-hand side is true, where o, omega is basically an interval. And what I do is I show you that uh, using positional derivatives, which are very simple, I'll put a link to all this stuff in the details section, that what you have essentially is a, a telescoping, so, so really what you're doing is you're summing all of them uh, in the mainstream calculus supposedly to infinity, but you're not really doing that, okay? It, it's, it's, it's an illusion. You, you cannot sum infinitely many values. So, you begin this way. You let this sum divided by n, which is an arithmetic mean. Okay, these f prime of x plus kw over n is a positional derivative. We don't even care that it is a real number, as the Britannica says. It doesn't, it's nonsense. We don't even have to worry about real numbers or rational numbers or anything. It, this here is just a magnitude, okay? This f prime of x plus k omega over n is a magnitude. So we have to find the limit of this as n approaches infinity, okay? And so as you can see, if you expand that whole expression, this is what you get. And the reason I've highlighted these in different colors is to show you that everything between the two endpoints, the two endpoints, this and this cancels out. And you simply end up with n over omega times the difference, which uh, the limit actually doesn't even come into play anymore because there's no n in the expression. The n's cancel out and you're left with the typical form that you find on the right. In other words, f prime of c is equal to this, right? To this expression here. Right. So uh, to find the other, uh, the other possible form, we just simply do a substitution and we see it uh, done this way. So this here is the same as this, just with a, fun, uh, with a little switch. And of course, the fundamental theorem of calculus is derived in one step from this, okay? Because an arithmetic mean, or rather an area, is the product of two arithmetic means. So we simply say that it's f prime of c times b minus a, the product of two arithmetic means. How is b minus a the interval with a product? Well, you'll see now. I defined ge area generally as the, num the horizontal line lengths, the arithmetic mean of the horizontal line lengths, as you see here, the arithmetic mean of these, multiplied by the arithmetic mean of these. That works for any particular area, okay? And as you've seen, and as I've showed you here, the only reason you're able to do it for all the ordinates is that the sum telescope, so it can be done in a fixed number of steps. Actually, in one step, just take the difference, f, just take the difference, f of x plus omega minus f of x. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'll also put a link to this document, and you can study it in your own time. So, uh, <clears throat> you can see that this is the proof using mainstream calculus, and to, to understand this, you need to understand all the garbage of limit theory, infinity, and infinitesimals, which you can't really ever understand because they're all ill-formed Ill concepts. Now, I taught in China. I taught A-level and AP calculus mathematics in China, and I also have a proof of the same thing in Chinese, Okay, which is much shorter, by the way. It's only two pages. So this is the proof of it. And this was used by my co-teacher, a Chinese teacher, to explain to the students the proof of the mean value theorem and that it is indeed an arithmetic mean. Okay, I was the one to come up with this. Now, in the new calculus, in the new calculus, it's, this is all far simpler because if you use the new calculus definition of derivative, you, 
you don't have all that garbage about limits and infinity and infinitesimals and anything else. So all that is required to prove is that the average gradient of all the purple tangents inside here is equal to the gradient of the blue tangent at C, of this blue tangent at C. That's what it means, okay? And so, <clears throat> once again, this is possible in the new calculus. This, isn't, this is the arithmetic mean in the new calculus, and if you expand it, you'll be able to get this, and you'll see again that the middle terms cancel out neatly, and you end up with exactly the same result as you do in mainstream calculus. No limit theory, no infinity or infinitesimal garbage. And from this, immediately, the new calculus uh, integral is formed. Okay, this here is the mainstream integral, but there's also a new calculus integral which doesn't have uh, things like infinite sums or anything like that. Okay, and in effect, this here times the interval, this part here times the interval width is the integral in the new calculus, okay? In other words, the sum of all f prime mu sub s from s1 to k. There's no infinity. There's nothing like that. This will always work correctly in the new calculus, and it's easy to learn, and it doesn't take years to master. Now, I wanted to go over this <coughs> uh, uh, material once again to remind students that the new calculus is the first rigorous formulation of calculus in human history. And it's not just a rigorous reformulation. It has many more features, powerful theorems, and uh, properties that cannot be used using your bogus mainstream definition. So, for example, you, you can't do a lot of the things, like, for example, the, the Gabriel polynomial, which is a fixed-term polynomial uh, that can vary in number of terms, but is always fixed. You cannot use that. In your, new, in your bogus calculus, because the derivative in the new calculus is well-defined. In other words, it's well-formed, okay? This is the definition of derivative in the new calculus. Some may say, oh, but you don't allow for a derivative at an inflection point in the new calculus. That's no problem, because the mean value theorem doesn't give us stuff about inflection points when it's calculating the arithmetic mean, okay? So, uh, there you have it. This is the brilliant new calculus, or, or a simple little introduction, and uh, an illustration of what the mean, value re the mean value theorem really is. The reason your calculus works is due to the mean value theorem, and nothing else. And there are not many different theorems for integrals, as, as that idiot Professor Gilbert Strang of MIT says, and all the other fools who are his colleagues. Um, there is only one mean value theorem, and everything else is just a slight variation on that same idea. Nothing else besides that. I'm John Gabriel, and this is the New Calculus Channel. Till next time, friends. Goodbye.